The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I'm the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I've spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty, but cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will, and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. For our meditation, I would like to meditate with you on the following verse of the Gospel. Whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruit in plenty. And especially on the following points of the verse. First, whoever remains in me. Second, and I in him. And third and last, bears fruit in plenty. First, whoever remains in me. We know that to remain generally means to abide, to stay, to endure, to last, to continue to exist. For example, when we speak about the remains of our breakfast, for example, food, this is a leftover, or the remains of a city, it is the ruins, the archaeological sites. Or we can even say, this is a, a less cheerful example, we can speak about the remains of our of, a, of, of a loved ones, the remains of somebody, which is the body after the death. And this last example may be particularly significant why do we call it remains? We call it remains because perhaps as scripture says, the one who is from the earth belongs to the earth. It remains on earth. John 3rd 31. Now, if there are remains, it means there is something which did not remain. And what is that thing, and where did it go? Again, Jesus gives us an answer. He said, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. And then he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3rd, 15, 16. And with those words of the Lord, we can come to understand that what we call remains is actually what does not remain. What we call remains 
is exactly what is perishable. It is precisely what is condemned to vanish and to disappear, while what does not remain anymore in our eyes is precisely what remains forever. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. John 11:25. Whoever remains in me. How do we enter in the Lord? And how can we remain in the Lord? The door of faith, wrote Pope Benedict XVI in his letter, Porta Fidei, The Door of Faith. In this book he wrote, he said that the door of faith is always open for us, ushering us into the life of communion with God and offering entry into his church. We enter in the Lord through the grace of faith in baptism, but we remain in him not only through faith, but also through hope and love in action. But when the Son of God comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find us remaining strong in our faith, in our love and hope, or will he find just the remains of our faith? Dear brothers and sisters, let us not be Christians, Catholics, for one day or for some days, for one Sunday or for some Sundays, for Christmas or Easter, but let us be truly faithful. It is easy, it is easy to become Christian, Catholic, perhaps easy to become a priest or a religious, consecrated person, perhaps easy to get married. It is much less easy to remain faithful up to the end because we'll have always good reasons not to remain. Let us strive to be faithful. Let us strive to be faithful. Let us strive to be faithful. And as our song says, faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Whoever remains in me and I in him, few verses after the gospel, we just heard, after this gospel, the Lord will tell his disciples, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will remain, John 15, 16. In the same way we may say, it is not we who remain in the Lord, it is he who remains in us. Because how can we remain in the Lord if he does not remain with us? How can we be united with him if he does not unite us to himself? How can we stay alive if he takes away his breath from us? In this regard, the allegory, allegory of the vine and the branches is quite significant. I am the vine, you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. The Lord remains with us through his word and through the sacraments, especially through the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. Through this sacrament, he remains indeed with me, with you, with the world, until the end of time, as he assured himself, I am with you always until the end of times. And therefore, dear brothers and sisters, our prayer is not just, Lord, make me remain with you, but we have to pray as the disciples of Emmaus, who said, who urges him strongly, stay with us, stay with us, Lord, for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. Remain with us. Whoever remains in me 
and I in him bears much fruit. Which kind of fruit can we expect from a branch united to the tree? As scripture says, by the fruit you will recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes, bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. For example, let's take again an example of a mango tree, a julie mango tree. A julie mango tree, which has uh, 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 branches, when you see the, the, the mangoes on the branches, we know that the branches cannot bear papayas. Doesn't make sense. But when we say the, the mangoes on the, on the branch, it will be very pretentious from the branch to say, this is my, mango, my mangoes. We will not say, this branch bears fruits. We will say, this tree bears fruits. The same thing for us. We won't say, look, this branch or that branch bears fruit, but we will say, that tree bears fruit. If we are united with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ who is truly the tree of life and love, we shall bear fruit, sweet fruit in plenty, not our own fruit, but his fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. And what are the fruit of the Spirit? St. Paul told us in the letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, 22, 23, he said, the fruit of the spirits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And therefore, we must seriously ask ourselves sometimes, if in my life, there is not plenty of love, of joy, of peace, kindness, of gentleness, of self-control, perhaps, perhaps I'm like a branch that has been thrown away, which may wither and which may end up on the fire. The sweetest fruit of the Holy Spirit are love. Love and joy, as the Lord tells us in the Gospel, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and remain in his love. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15, 9 to 30. From those last words, we may foresee that the tree with which we can be, we can remain united in order to bear fruits is Jesus Christ himself. It is Jesus Christ and his holy cross, his paschal mystery. Truly I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, he remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loses his life, loses it. But whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. In his recent apostolic exhortation, Gaudete et Exultate, on the call to holiness in today's world, it, just, it was published just last two weeks ago. Pope Francis wrote that the saints are joyful and full of good humor. Though completely realistic, they have a great sense of humor and they radiate a positive and hopeful spirit for Christian life is joy in the Holy Spirit. The necessary fruit 
of communion with Christ, of the love of charity, is joy. The effects of charity is always joy. Dear brothers and sisters, in one word, the fruit of our communion with Christ is holiness. Holiness is therefore the fruit of an effective communion with Jesus Christ. Holiness like St. Paul, like St. Peter. All the saints are fruit of the Holy Spirit. All the saints have loved Christ, not just by talking, but effectively. As authentic disciples of Jesus Christ, as true Christians and Catholics, let us remain united with the tree of life, with Jesus Christ, with his glorious cross. The sense of this tree may taste bitter since it is total surrender to God's will, but the fruit are very sweet. Whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruits in plenty. Our blessed Mother Mary remains in, with his son. She remains with him till the end. Let us ask her to remain also with us. Let us ask our Mother Mary to remain with our whole world. And let us ask her to intercede for us, for each of us, for our families, and also for our nation, for this beautiful country, Trinidad and Tobago. Let us pray that it may always remain in the Holy Trinity, and moreover, that the Holy Trinity may remain in this country so that it may bear fruit and fruit in plenty, fruit of peace, of love and joy. Amen.